Hallelujah. And you and you do all you can do to help the Lord. Somebody said the Lord don't need no help. Yeah. Hallelujah. But sometimes you can put yourself into things okay. that you'll go through some things yes, that you don't have to go through. Amen. Hallelujah. You keep that distance from people. Amen. Hallelujah. Keep your hands clean. Keep your body clean. Yes, sir. Amen. And watch the crowds. Hallelujah. And until this epidemic move out the way, God's going to move. Yes. Give the Lord a chance. Give him a chance. He will. God promised to keep us. The Lord said, when I see the blood, I'll pass over you. Thank you, Jesus. But we have to remember when that was said, the children of Israel stayed in their home. Yeah. Hallelujah. They stayed in their home. Hallelujah. And they had the blood over the doorpost. Hallelujah. The room, the lineage. And I want you to know that God passed over them. There's some things you have to do too. Just like God has instructed them. Today the Lord has instructed you yeah. to do a certain way. Amen. You're going to find out that a lot of folks that are coming together, they're going to, they're going to have to go back. Right. They got to go back and do it all over again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we decided to just continue to do it the right way. Amen. We thank the Lord for today. Tonight is Sunday school night. And we are so happy to have one that is capable of bringing the Sunday school lesson. Not that uh, others is not capable of me, but uh, Mother Tracy is with me all the time. And she she's the one that is more easier for me to instruct and tell, you know, that I want you uh, and if, if not, then I have to continue to switch and switch and switch. And I have to worry about those who don't want to come and so forth and so on. But I know she's going to be with me anyway. Uh, someone said years ago that old Sarah Pace, and Mother Pace, you can see them everywhere they go. Mm -hmm. and I thank God and Mother Pace is like that too. Uh, someone see old Sarah Pace in the barber shop. They looked up, and Mother Pace was there too. So God is good. He's merciful and kind of good to love one another. It's good to stay. If you got a spouse, stay close to your spouse. Love one another. And do the thing that God is asking you to do. Tonight, we're going to, by the end of the preliminary, we're going to ask Mother Trish to come in her own way. And she comes and bring you this Sunday school lesson. Something like it's about disobedience. Right. That's a good lesson. Yeah. <laughs> and she brings it. This lesson, give her your undivided attention, Mother Church. Amen. Just want to say praise the Lord to the saints of God. God is good, and He's good all the time. Do thank the Lord for another week. The Lord has brought us back to the house of prayer one more time. Do thank the Lord for all things in His great name. Do praise the Lord for the saints of God one by one. Amen. Do desire you all to pray for me. Amen. And we thank the Lord for the Sunday school lesson for tonight. And it's coming from 1 Samuel 13, 5 through 14. And our subject reads, Saul's disobedience under pressure. Amen. Saul's disobedience under pressure. Yes. And we know disobedience means not doing what you have been instructed to do. You're going to do something opposite. Amen. And when you are instructed to do uh, by God, amen, you should not be disobedient. Amen. Because God's words say obedience is better than sacrifice. Amen. So we see here that Undoubtedly, in our lesson, Saul is under some kind of pressure to be disobedient, but that should never be the case with the saints of God. So as our uh, lesson began, 1 Samuel 13 and 5, and it says, And the Philistines gathered together to fight it with Israel, 30,000 chariots and 6,000 horsemen. 
and people as the sand which is upon the seashore in multitude. And they came up and pitched in Mishmash, eastward of Bethlehem. Amen. Do thank the Lord. Amen. Because we see here that uh, Jonathan has already defeated the Ammonites, and we see here that he is he and his son Jonathan, they have approached the Philistines and have defeated them as well. So we see here how many know the enemy don't like to be defeated. So we see here that the Philistines have regrouped, amen, and have got them up a huge army. And we see the Philistines have 30,000 chariots, amen and 6,000 horsemen, amen, and so many people fighting their army, but it was more than the sands on the seashore, amen. But this shouldn't uh, deter the saints of God from fighting against the enemy. Why? Because we, God don't look at multitudes, neither should we. Because I told you some weeks ago, God's addition is different from what the world is. One of us can chase a thousand and two can put 10,000 to a flight. So we see here that uh, they started looking at the number of the Philistines and that sort of got them sort of a little shaky, amen, a little nervous, amen. They got up under a lot of pressure, amen. When you're under so much pressure, you will make a mistake. You will go on your own, amen. And it's never good for us to go out on our own. It's always good to acknowledge God so God can direct our path. Amen. Verse 6. It says, when the men of Israel saw that they were in a strait, amen, they were in uh, trouble, amen, with the Philistines. Why? Because they see these people have regrouped and they are coming together, amen. They are going to come and, and uh, get them for defeating them in the war. It says for the people were distressed, amen. The Israelites, they were distressed, why? Because they were looking at the great number of the Philistines and they were progressing to come after them. It says then the people did hide themselves in caves, amen. In the in thickets, in rocks, and in high places, and in pits. Amen. Uh, so many of us know we've heard that saying: when the tough, when the going gets tough, the tough get going. Yeah. Amen. We should never forget what the Lord has done for us. They could look back and see how the Lord had already let them fall against the Amorites, amen, and got victory over them. Whatever we come up against, amen, always remember what the Lord has brought you through, what the oh, yeah. Lord has brought you from. Never forget that, amen, because this can strengthen your faith. Look what the Lord has done. Count your many blessings. See what the Lord has done. Why? Because the Lord had already done great things for them, and they didn't have any need to fear. Amen. But being in the flesh, they was afraid. Amen. They ran and hid themselves in the rocks and in the thickets. Amen. Anywhere they could find a place, amen, that they could, uh, yes. that they could hide themselves from the enemy. Amen. We should never run from the enemy. Thank Why? You, because Jesus. we have the victory. Amen. Uh, it said, uh, one song we used to sing, I beat the devil running and I'm so glad. No, you should never uh, uh, run against the devil. Amen. You ought to put that devil to a flight. Amen. Why? Because we are on the winning side. When you are on the winning side, you have got total victory. Amen. And when the enemy comes, the enemy already knows he is a defeated force. Oh, yes. Amen. Uh, verse 7. It says, And some of the Hebrews went over Jordan to the land of Gad and Gilead. As for Saul, he was yet in Gilead. And all the people followed him trembling. Amen. The people were so afraid, although they 
was with that king that has just been anointed king. Amen. He has been anointed king for about two years. Amen. And now he is facing the enemy. Amen. God had already let him mourn some battles. Amen. This should have sharpened his faith in the Lord. And God always have a divine plan. We should follow the Lord's divine plan to the T. If you deviate, you can celebrate victory. Why? Because you haven't followed God's divine plan. If you follow his divine plan, you are going to have victory. When you are following his divine plan, you are in his will. Amen. We should always want to stay in the will of God. Because oh, yeah. when we get out of the Lord's will, we are on our own and we are going to be defeated. Amen. It say all the people that was following King Saul, amen, they were trembling. Amen. They were really afraid. When you start trembling, you are afraid. Amen. So we see here that they are following the king and they are afraid. Amen. Verse 8. Amen. And it say, and he tarried seven days. Mind you, this was already instructed for Saul to do by uh, the, the priest Samuel. He had already told him when he had anointed him king, I want you to go to Gilgad, and I want you to stay there seven days. And while you are there seven days, I want you to just stay there because I will be there. I'm coming, and I'm going to do a sacrifice of sacrifices, and I'm also going to do a, a sacrifice of uh, the offering. Amen. So we see here that uh, he is waiting. You know, you can do half of the commandment mm -hmm. and still be wrong. Oh, yeah. You have to do all that the Lord has uh, commanded you to do. Amen. Yes, uh, Saul stayed there seven days. Amen. And two, you got to mind yourself. Are you patient? Amen. Yes, he was obedient enough to stay in Gilgad seven days, but was he patient? Sometimes you can be doing something, but you are impatient. You yeah. want it to hurry up and transpire. Amen. But the word of God says, wait how long? Until. Amen. You got to wait until the Lord has done what he told you to do. Amen. You got to carry out what God wants you to do. Why? Because obedience is better than sacrifice. You got to obey the Lord. God don't honor disobedience. God won't bless a mess. Amen. That's why you got to keep yourself in accord with the word of God. So we see here that uh, uh, Saul has done half of what uh, Samuel had told him to do. Yes, he stayed there seven days. Amen. And by him staying there seven days, he never forgot that the Philistine was near coming on them. By this time, they have uh, uh, entered into the territory of the Israelites. Amen. And this made uh, Saul, Saul uncomfortable. Amen. He was fearful also. Amen. And the people that they scattered. Amen. They were leaving him. Amen. You can't follow the Lord just because the people are with you. You've got to stand for God even if you got to stand all by yourself. Amen. Oh, yeah. Because if you obey God because of somebody else, you still aren't being faithful to the Lord. But you ought to stand for God if you got to stand all along by yourself. So we see here that by the people scattering from the king, amen, scattering for, from Saul, amen, he's thinking about now when the Philistines come, I, I don't have that many that's going to fight with me, amen. But when you are fighting on the Lord's side, God is more than enough. God is more than all those 30,000 chariots. God is more than enough of all those 6,000 hearts yeah. and, and all of those people more than on the seashore. Amen. God is more than enough. God will take you through this and God will take you through that. 
Amen. Mm. So we see here, it say uh, in uh, James 2 and 10, it say for whosoever shall keep the whole law and you offend in one point, you are guilty of it all. So we see here that Saul kept some of it, but he offended in one point. So that made him wrong all the way around. Yeah. Amen. So we are going to verse 9. It says, And Saul said, Bring hither a burnt offering to me, and a peace offering. And he offered the burnt offering. Saul was anointed king. Samuel was ordained the priest. Amen. The priest was the only one that could offer a sacrifice unto the Lord. Sometimes you get out of your lane. Sometimes you'll get in territories that's not for you to do. Amen. Saul was only supposed to do the duty that Samuel had told him to do from the Lord. And a lot of times, just because the preacher gives you a commandment from the Lord, amen, if you disobey, you aren't just a disobeying man, you are disobeying God, amen. We got to obey God at all times, amen, because if you disobey, amen, you are going to be in trouble with the Lord, amen. So we see here that Saul told the people to bring me a burnt offering to me, amen, and a peace offering. I will have to always tell us, you follow him as he follow Christ. He said, if he go wrong, don't follow him in that. So we see here that although Saul was wrong, they still brought him that burnt offering yeah. and that peace offering. Amen. And he went on and offered it up. Amen. Sometimes you can do things through ignorance. Amen. Sometimes you can do things, amen, by disobedience. Amen. And when you do that, you are going to be in trouble with the Lord. Amen. Because he know he was not ordained to do any kind of offering. That was Samuel's job. Amen. And do you know, people know when they are wrong. Just as soon as Saul finished offering up these sacrifices, who showed up? The man of God. Amen. Verse 10. And it says, and it came to pass that as soon as he had made an end of offering the burnt offering, behold, when you look, Samuel came. Amen. And Saul went out to meet him that he might salute him. Amen. You know, when you are wrong, you got to swear to your own hurt and you change not. Amen. Most people, when they know they have been found wrong, amen, they'll start giving excuses. Amen. They'll start giving the man of God excuses why I couldn't do this and why I couldn't do that. Amen. But don't you know you need to have patience? The wait on the Lord. One scripture say, I waited patiently on the Lord, and he inclined unto me. Amen. And don't you know when he inclined unto me, he heard my cry. Amen. He brought, he'll bring you up out of a horrible pit. Hallelujah. And he'll set your feet upon a rock. Amen. And that rock is Jesus. Amen. Yeah. And he will establish your God. Amen. One scripture say, wait on the Lord. Amen. And he say, not when you wait on it, you ought to be in good courage. Amen. And he'll strengthen your heart. Amen. The scripture say, wait, I say, on the Lord. This is what Saul should have been rehearsing the scripture in his spirit. He should have just waited patiently on the Lord. Why? Right? Because Samuel was coming. A lot of times we want the Lord to come now. Lord, help me right now, Lord. Sometimes God want to work patience. See, are you going to wait patiently for him? Amen. And when you wait patiently for the Lord, the Lord is going to come. All oh, yeah. of God shall come to pass. Amen. Oh, yeah. 
he shall destroy the bank. Why? Because the Lord is going to do what he saying he will do. Amen. Verse 11. And it say, and Samuel said, what hast thou done? And Samuel said, because I saw that the people were scattered from me, mm -hmm. and that thou came not within the days appointed, and that the Philistines gathered themselves together at Mishmash. Amen. So oh, we yeah. see here that uh, once uh, Saul went out when he finished making those sacrifices of which he shouldn't have done, Samuel showed up. Amen. Samuel asked him one question. What hast thou done? All right. And when he asked him what hast thou done, it reminded me of the Lord in the Garden of Eden. When he approached Adam and God said to Adam, why art thou? Don't you know even the man of God know where you are? Oh, yeah. God already know where you are. God already know what you have done. Amen. And when God already know, it's good to give it up and turn it loose. Amen. Don't hold on to it because God, God already know. Amen. The Lord uh, uh, told Adam, why are that? Yeah. Because uh, Adam knew every day about the same time the Lord is coming in the cool blood of day. Oh, yeah. Amen. And God wanted to know, Adam, where are you? Amen. Look like you have moved, amen. And don't you know God will never leave us, but we are the one that's going to move. Amen. And when he moved, amen, he said, I heard thy voice in the garden and I was afraid. Amen. Mm -hmm. Don't you know sin will make you afraid? Oh, when yeah. you do wrong, you are going to be afraid. Why? Because you are out of the will of God. Anytime you're out of the will of God, you are going to be afraid. And Adam said, because I was naked, I hid myself. Sin will bring you to an open shame. Yes, it will. Every time. Every time it's going to bring you to an open shame. Yes. Amen. And we see here in this 11th verse that when Samuel asked for thou done? Mm -hmm. He started making excuses. And don't you know when you start making excuses, all of those excuses was hung to the cross. Amen. Saul so said, because I saw that the people were scattered. Amen. Like I just said, stand with the Lord if you got to stand all by yourself. Oh, yeah. Amen. And thou came and not within the appointed time. It was seven days past, Samuel, and you hadn't got here. You know, people get in a hurry when it comes to the Lord, waiting on the Lord. Amen. You got to wait and wait patiently on the Lord because the Lord is going to come. God, every one of his shares come to pass. If the Lord say wait until, you better wait, I say, on the Lord. Amen. Because the Lord is not sure concerning his promises to us. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Verse 12. Amen. It says, Therefore, I, therefore, said I, the Philistines will come down now upon me to give that, and I have not made supplication unto the Lord. I forced myself, therefore, and offered a burnt offering. Amen. Lord, and me. don't you know he shouldn't have done that. So many times now we hear peer pressure. Don't let the enemy put you on the peer pressure. You pressure the devil. Amen. Why? Oh, yeah. Because you are on the Lord's side. When, when you're on the Lord's side, you need to pressure the devil. You need to tell the devil about sanctification. You ought to tell the devil, pressure him on coming on the Lord's side, living for the Lord. Because when uh, on the Lord's side is the winning side. On the Lord's side is the best uh, side. Amen. Yeah. No excuse is good enough. You have to suffer the consequences when you disobey the will of God. Amen. For every action, there's a reaction. Oh, yeah. When you sin, there 
of consequences for your sin. You will have to pay the sin. You will have to pay the penalty for your sin. Amen. You might not die that day, but you are going to have to pay the penalty for your sin. Amen. And the penalty for sin is death. That's the reason we need to repent quickly. Amen. Why? Because God is watching us. God already know. Amen. He already know I was going, going and I was coming. Amen. God already know everything about us. Amen. God say, I know your thoughts are far off. Amen. When God has a, just because God has a, allowed Samuel to anoint Saul as king, mm -hmm. amen, don't let your position get you in trouble. Sometimes your, your little position you think you have, amen, you think you can do everything, amen, but stay in your lane, amen. Yeah. Why? Because that was not his to do, amen. He had been just anointed to be king over Israel. Amen. And he was doing that. Amen. But he wanted to step into Samuel's place just because he was not there when he thought when he should have been. So many times we be waiting on the Lord and we want the Lord. Lord, come now, Lord. I need this done. Lord, my, my rent is due today, Lord. Amen. So many times we jump the gun, so to speak. We go out and make a loan, amen, and pay it, amen. God was already going to do it. Sometimes God just want to do it another way. Because God says, your way is not his way. He says, high as the heaven is from the earth, so are my ways and your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts, amen. We are always acknowledge the Lord. In all of our ways. Why? Because we need him to direct our prayer. Amen. Saul was talking to Samuel. He said, I had made supplication with the Lord. We need to pray without ceasing. We need to pray at all times. Amen. Oh, yeah. We need to look to the Lord. Amen. They used to uh, sing a song. I'm sending up my temple. Amen. Pray ahead of time because we don't know what tomorrow holds. Sometimes when you pray it up, amen, when your troubles show up, amen, God will bring you out, amen. Why? Because you already prayed, amen. We need to be faster. We need to be prayed up, amen. Why? Because the Lord is on his way, amen. Every day the Lord gives us to get up. That's another day we got to fight against the enemy. That's another day we need to fast and pray, amen, and be ready, amen, because we don't know the day or the hour of the Lord is coming, amen, and plus when God allows you another day, we just don't know what that day holds for us. You are going to have to go through some kind of trial. Don't let your trial get you to the a point where you will disobey God. Don't let your pressure get to the point where you are disobedient to God. Some yes. disobedience caused him his kingdom. Just because he was anointed king, he was God was going to let his kingdom reign forever. But that one act of disobedience cost him his kingdom. Amen. And don't you know? We better watch. We better walk circumspectly before the Lord. Amen. Because we don't want to blaspheme against the Lord. We don't want to go against the Lord. Why? Because God will get another person and do your job better than what you are doing. Amen. Amen. He would not allow Saul to go on. Why? Because he had got in Samuel's place. Amen. Samuel had been ordained. And sometimes when God allows you to do a thing, think about last week's lesson. God had allowed Saul to prophesy with the prophets. Mm -hmm. Amen. Just because he allowed him to prophesy with the prophets, he wasn't ordained to be a prophet. Amen.
amen. He was not ordained, amen, to do sacrifices, amen. So this act of disobedience got him in trouble with the Lord. And by him getting out of the will of the Lord, the Lord say, I'm going to get me another man who's going to be a man after my own heart. And Thank don't you know if we're going to be God's people, we ought to be men and women after the Lord's own heart. Why? Because David was that man after God's own heart. When he went wrong, he repented immediately. Amen. And that's what we should do. If you happen to go wrong, repent immediately. Amen. Oh, Why? Yeah. Because God say, I'm now you. Even in your mouth. Amen. God want to bring you out of all of your dilemmas. And dilemmas. Amen. And I will suddenly say, Saul, disobedience under pressure. Don't let pressure pressure you out. God is good. God bless you. Amen. It's a wonderful, wonderful lesson. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, we thank God. Thank God for that wonderful lesson. And you know, you get so many thoughts that someone bring you the word of God and you listen real closely. Oftentimes we are carried as ears. Right. Amen. You're thinking about something else, something else, and you gotta think about the word that the individual bring to you. Amen. And then after after which you start gathering your own thoughts. This is a real good lesson. Saul disobedient under pressure. You all excuse me, but when I when I was a young man we we used to say that pressure would kill a young man. Pressure is something else. Amen. Amen. Pressure will put a lie on a young man. Yes, but those of us who know that God is with us, you won't let pressure get you down. That's right. You carry your task out like you are supposed to. Obedience yes, is better than sacrifice. Yes. It's bad to be disobedient. Amen. Yeah, to go against yeah. God. That's terrible to go against God. And it's bad to overstep your boundaries. Yes, sir. Um, <clears throat> so many, you know what the words say. But yet still you say, well, I, I'm going to do what I want to do. Mm -hmm. You overstep your boundaries. God's word is to be obeyed. That's right. Amen. It doesn't matter what position you may hold. It's always best to obey God. Uh, that, you know, when I was a young man, I never had a problem in that area. Whatever my pastor told me, you know, and and I thank God that my pastor always told me things that was in line with the Word of God. You know, I, I never had to deviate from what they was telling me. There was times that we had to pay, uh, we had to pay our tithes and we had to pay <clears throat> also our rent. And I never forget some men tried to get me to go against what Bishop Philip was teaching us. Bishop Philip taught us to pay your tithes uh -huh. mm -hmm. and your offering. And your rather was just an offering. At the, at the time, Mother Trader was taking care of children. Uh -huh. And I paid for her and me. But I, some older men said, well, what I do, I take my tithe money. And I be my rabbit. Jesus. And the Lord spoke to me immediately and let me know you can't do that. That's right. <laughs> Certain one of us can't do things that other folks are doing. When you are truly saved, obedience is what you're supposed to do. 
Amen. Amen. God is expecting for you to be obedient. Well, isn't that pressure? Yeah. Uh, it doesn't matter how much pressure may come on you. Sure, you're going to be pressured too. Uh, nowadays they call it peer pressure. Yeah, mm -hmm. someone around you is going to tell you how to do it wrong. All right. How to do it wrong. Yeah, that's peer pressure. Yes, sir. This, this is my partner, this is my friend, you know. One of me said, well, this is my wife, this is my husband, uh, and he's telling me to do these things, and it's wrong. But the devil of scripture tell you, well, obey your husband. And you're supposed to obey as long mm -hmm. as one is not going against the word of God. Amen. Let every soul be subject. be subject to the higher power. And the high power is the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. Amen. I, I'm sure Mother Curtis would never do it. But she made a mistake and tried to tell me to do some things that would contribute to the word of God. And I recognize I'm not going to do it. Yeah, that's right. Is that right? Amen. I, I may be too kind to uh, won't fuss and, and won't get in the fight. But I sure enough I said, no, not this time, man. Have you real kind? And I, maybe I love you, but I can't uh -uh. Okay. try to win a over to do the right thing to through loving kindness have I drawn deep. Right. God is a good God. God is. You know, and we are supposed to obey God Amen. regardless to the circumstance. Whether it hurt or not, obey God. And I thank God, I, like I said, I never had a problem in that area, right. obeying God. And I thank God for the good pastors that I had. They would try to lead me into anything that was wrong. That's right. If they did, I didn't understand it. God is good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is good. Yeah, yeah. We should always wait patiently. On the Lord. Mm -hmm. Wait patiently. Yeah. On God. Wait on it. Amen. Don't get in a hurry. That's right. But I, 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 I got so much to do. Yeah. I need to get some of this out the way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're not supposed to have so much pressure on you. That's right. That you overrun your boundaries. Yes, Wait patiently uh -huh. on the Lord. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Even if it seems that. He would never come. My God. If it seems like God is not coming, I'm going to still wait on him. That's it. Amen. That's right. Amen. If, uh, uh, I thank God for my leaders. I used to work with Bishop Ayers. Bishop Ayers, I never would get in. He and I was traveling. We were going to Georgia. And he said, I'll be there at such and such a time. Evidently something happened and he didn't come. He should have been there about 12. Well, one o'clock came. But because he told me to wait on him. If I wasn't patient, I, I prayed until I got patient. <laughs> if you don't have that patient, then you ought to pray right. until patient comes. Is that right? That's I waited anyway.
24, 36, we knew they played with 36. Right. We knew that, you know, I, I didn't just go and do 24. But he changed it when he called 24 birds. Then he said 36. We knew that was the play. Right. We learned how to obey. Uh -huh. Yeah, even when we were younger, when we was in elementary school, uh, our um, teacher would tell us, well, such a certain one going to be captain. Y'all play softball. Even in elementary school, you we learned to obey the one that was captain. Is that right? And some of us can't obey nobody. Mm -hmm. And when you go against God's word, you be disobedient, something is going to happen to you. Learn to have some patience and wait on the Lord. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and whatever. Your plans are, sometimes we plan things. And, 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 and your plans should, you know, if they don't take place, still obey God. Amen. Mm -hmm. Obey His word. Just because your plan didn't it fail through. Uh -huh. And you say, well, I, I got to do something to make it go. No, uh -huh. yes, obey, don't do anything wrong. We try to make your plans go. Always keep your, the word of God before you. Yes, sir. Amen. Under no circumstance should one go back, should one disobey the word of God. Amen. Under no circumstance. Yes, sir. And uh, <clears throat> Mother Curtis kept saying something that we ought to stay in our land. Stay in the land. That's hard. For some people to do, it's hard for some people to stay in their lane. Yeah, yeah. It's well, I can do it better than him. Mm. That's not your job. That's right. If it's not your job, then you just may bring something up on you yes, that you won't be able to get off of you. Yeah, you, you may see uh, one of your leaders doing something that may start off wrong, yeah. but you watch it. Yes, in the yes. end, if God is there, it's going to end up right. Yeah. Yeah, God, God will fix it. God will fix it right before your eyes. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, sometimes we, we think that sacrifices is going to fix it. But no amount of sacrifice can take the place of obedience to God. Mm -hmm. No amount of sacrifice. I don't care what you bring to God for the wrong that you have done. It can't take the place yeah, that's right. of what this will be. Mm. You know, somebody said, well, God said that what? Uh, for, for this for this sin, you burnt that. that. That was good back then. Mm -hmm. But for every action, yes, sir, yes, this is what I mean. Yeah, yeah. For, for every action, there's a reaction. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Saul, he disobeyed. Hallelujah. But it wasn't for God. He lost the kingdom. Yeah. I heard Mother Kirby saying that. He lost the kingdom. Why? Because he disobeyed. He did the sacrifice. He did all that. Uh -huh. And he, he asked uh, Samuel, said, you know, the more or less, you know, ask God for him. And that, that God would forgive me and, and, and not go on. Yeah, Lord, well, then it went on. But yet still, God had someone he had already known. Yeah, right. Sometimes some things is detrimental. Amen. You never get up from it. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm, I'm, I am afraid of sin. I'm not afraid of sin. Amen. I'm, I'm afraid of sin because if I can't get my heart up, where it ought to be. If you understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. You may, you may come on and say, Lord, forgive me. But it's not real, real, real. All right. When you ask God to forgive, honey, you got to be for real. Yeah, yeah. I'm talking about showing up for real. Mm -hmm. Real, real. Yes, sir. David went wrong. He said, Lord, create me a clean heart and renew the right That's spirit. Real. In me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And God forgave David, but something.
didn't have to happen. That's right. He had to David lost that son. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he lost that son. Yeah. For every action, it's a reaction. Mm -hmm, something is going on down. That's why it's good to just go ahead from the beginning, just obey yes. God's word. Amen. You pray and tell God. Say, Lord, give me good understanding. That's right. As a young man, I just pray, Lord, give me wisdom and not to on them. Know how to obey God. Know how to do the thing that was right. Because I never want to get on the wrong side of God. How do I come about that? Because we need him. Mm -hmm. We need him. Yeah. And any time we step out of line with God. Yeah. And, and God sometimes will come by and show you. That's right. Mm -hmm. Show you what to do. God requires of us. And you do those things to ease it up. Mm -hmm. But something still may come up on you. He will be displeased with us because we didn't have to do it especially in this day and time that we are living God will be displeased with you he said well I, I went out and I seen God displeased because you didn't have to do it nowadays we have a more excellent yes, way yes. we're filled with the Holy Ghost All right. we're in better shape than mm -hmm. Saul and David all those people they didn't have the Holy Ghost but now we have the Holy Ghost. I was saying in one of the other lessons, I thank God for those men that went on. That's right. You can learn. Mm -hmm. yeah. I learned from them. Yeah, yeah. I see the mistake that they made. Don't make Hallelujah. I have sense enough not yeah. to make the same mistake they did. If if I'm running behind some men, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, and they run, and then I don't see them in front of them. I slow up. All right. Yeah. Why you slow up? They made it. That ran over cliff. All right, sir. I think if you ran in front of me, I don't see you. That's right. I'm going to slow down. Amen. Because I can learn from what you are doing. Amen. Mm -hmm. So those men went on, sure, they made a mistake. But we as saints of God should make the same mistake that they made. Nowadays, what people do, people act like they don't understand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, back in those times when men made did wrong, the Bible said God weeped at uh -huh. Momentarily, God he closed his eyes to it. But now he required every man, everywhere to live holy and to live right. God is a good God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're not in those old days no more. Uh -huh. hey, some folk go and put up the scripture where God, you know, he's a forgiving God, sure he is. And God is our advocate, yeah, he yeah. needs that too. Mm -hmm. But God expects for us to live to the fullest. In the name of A holy and a sanctified life. You're not going to be dipping to heaven, playing and singing, right. being disobedient today. So I'm going to straighten up tomorrow. No. Nah. That's not God's way. Don't ever be that. This is what God wants. God wants you to live older. He wants you to live right each and every day. Yeah. When we disobey uh, God's word, yes, we will not be blessed to carry on his will. Yeah. You won't be blessed to carry on his will. I see folks, I see people minister, you know, doing some hideous things. Yes, sir. I looked at it. I read my week too. But I knew that it was wrong. Yes, sir. And I would pray and tell God, Lord, don't let that be a part of me. Because I don't want anything to get in my way Amen. of making it in God's kingdom. I want to make it. Um, I, I see salvation is, is not something to play with. Yeah. You got to do it just like God said do it. Well, Pastor, that sounds so hard. Nah, but God said, 
that my yoke is easy and my burden is light. It's easy to be a holder when you want to be a holder. It's easy to do right when you want to do right. Amen. But when you're a disobedient person, you're down in you to disobey, you came up a disobedient child, you were disobedient in school, you were disobedient when you went elsewhere, and then you have never straightened out. You still disobedient. And we're called to be the rules out with God. Hallelujah. God is a good God. I'm going to stop. Now we used to sing a song, who is on the Lord's side. Oh, oh, so. Hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> It'll tell a story. Who is truly on the Lord's side? If you mess around with sin, if you in and out of sin, Daily, you God maybe I said this the other night. God maybe, maybe is trying to tell you something that you're not quite right. Well, Pastor, I just have to do certain things. Mm -hmm. If you just got to do certain things, I, you need to come to the altar. That's why we got altar. Right. I said a lot of churches don't have altar. No, what well, we better go and find one that got one where you can come near yeah. yeah. and call on the name of Jesus. Yeah. It's power. In the name Give of Jesus, name. God will save you and deliver you. Yeah. Hallelujah. Go down in the pool in Jesus' name. No wonder I can hear, hallelujah, Peter on the day of Pentecost. Hallelujah. Say, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sin. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. That's all you need is the Holy Ghost. We're going to stop. Thank God for the lesson. Thank uh, we thank God for uh, uh, Mother Curtis teaching this great lesson about disobedience. Whatever you do, obey God. Amen. Amen. If you obey God, God will bless you. Amen. We're about ready to go. Amen. Amen. Everyone want to stand with that way to go. We're going to come back Sunday morning. When we come back Sunday morning, we want everyone to bring your all. And that's all. If you have all already anointed and prayed for, I pray for a lot of all. Yeah. You know, and you don't have to bring a new bottle here. That's right. You know, if you already have an old bottle that already prayed for, yeah, I just a lot of prayer went over that. That's oh. right. And I'm sure the prayer you need is in that all. And the morning that we are going to anoint you, prayer is already there. The prayer you probably need. And we're just doing this as a unit. We're going to be unified. All right. And we believe that God is going to do something for you, especially when this, this church of virus is moving yes. throughout the room. Yeah. We, we, we're doing some things. We want to go before God. We all want to be consecrated. Hallelujah. And we want to be for real. Hallelujah. And anoint yourself. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, uh, David said, The Lord he is my shepherd. I shall not go. Yeah. Hallelujah. Then he said, Thy anointed my head. With all. all. Yeah. I cut run it over. And, and there was time that people in the barrel. Bible anointed themselves. Yeah. Ruth anointed herself. All right. David again, yes, when he yes. lost his son, he anointed himself. Yes. Amen. And we and we've been anointing ourselves for years. That's now. right. And you're gonna do the same thing Sunday morning. Amen. Amen. Let's have a mind, have a mind on Jesus. Whatever your problem is, bring it before the Lord again and believe that God mm -hmm. is going to God gave me. This to do, yes, sir. You know, because we don't want to check so many folks. That's right. I mean, I'm all right. That's right. But I mean, check somebody that has this Bible. Uh huh. So check yourself. That's, that's right. right. Church and yourself. I check them and then check you uh -huh. and pass it on. We we got to use wisdom. That's right. But we're just man of God. Sure. That's why I'm telling you what I'm telling that's you. That's right. Because God already has you. God's good. He's merciful and He's kind. We're gonna stop. Love everybody. Hope everyone loves us. Didn't you enjoy this Sunday school hour? God is good. I did, I did. I'm glad. Praise so glad. God.
for the sinners to be loved. Amen. The apostolic way. Yeah. All hearts are clear. Amen. May the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet communion of the Holy Ghost, rest, rule, and abide with his people now, henceforth, and forevermore, let all the people say. Amen. Peace to the saints. Likewise.